what's when you're trying to be on a webinar if you put the video on doesn't it hello everybody <laughs> it's joe henderson here welcome to another wonderful duck suit webinar while we give everyone a few moments to join i'll just go through a few of the usual pre-session reminders i'm joe i work in the marketing team at duck suit giles garnett our head of professional services will also be joining me in in supporting our wonderful guests today so we're all hands on deck here at ducks so for those of you who are new to our fortnightly webinars, hurrah, you finally found us. Um, our sessions are always focused on LinkedIn lead generation and how you can get more from your outreach activities. We always record the session and I'll have to say that sentence about 20 times, I think, during the session. Um, and it will be sent across to you then later today by email. And we also publish all of these recordings on our website and on our YouTube channel as well. If you're new to LinkedIn automation or you haven't tried DuckSoup yet, then why not give it a go? We have a lovely two week free trial for you. Uh, and with that, you can start practicing using all the tips that we'll be exploring in today's session and lots more besides. Once we get going, I will put the link for you in the chat box. For our existing users, don't forget that we love to share your reviews. So don't forget please to upload your feedback to g2 and david if i can ask you just to ping on to the cap slide just to remind everybody that we have these wonderful caps thank you very much um we have these wonderful caps to give away um we find user feedback is a great way to inform potential users about our products and services so if you use today's date when you submit your review then we'll be in touch to send you one of our cats as a little thank you um, and I'll pop that GT review in the chat as well shortly so reminder that you're all on mute however please put your questions in the questions box on the dashboard uh, and Giles and I will answer what we can as we go through but we'll save all the best ones for David to answer at the end of the session which leads me nicely on to David so David Duccini Today's guest host is the founder of Silicon Prairie, a business which offers modern finance solutions to organizations looking for alternative ways to raise capital. He does this using his own crowd builder software to generate LinkedIn connections for his clients to connect them with their most likely investors. David is a lover of books, which I'm sure you'll find out shortly and has had me in stitches during our recent conversations with his endless supply of one liners. He first introduced himself to me by saying I'm a spammer and I'm pretty good at it. However, I can assure you he is no spammer. His targeted approach to connecting with people is testament to that. Hence, here he is to talk to us today about his top techniques for securing 20 leads per day. So with that, David, I'm going to hand over to you and I will. Go All right. On. Very good. Thank you. Can you hear me? <laughs> we can we hear you. Like so thank you. Awesome. Very, very good. OK, so thank you so much. I really appreciate the opportunity to uh, to share what I've learned on my duck soup journey over the last uh, couple of years. Uh, so just a little bit about me. I'm kind of a, I joke and say I'm a kind of a software nerd who kind of accidentally became an investment banker. I kind of had to. So in my day job, we help companies raise money publicly or privately. It's crowdfunding, uh, which I'm sure many of you know. And one of the number one questions that we always got from our clients, in fact, we still get them is, you know, are you going to find me investors? Uh, and that's the short answer is, well, no, um, you know, you need to essentially build social capital. And so after, you know, I mean, I've been doing this since 2016. Uh, and then, you know, about a couple of years ago, I decided, well, why is it that everyone is trying to sell me leads? And I'm sure that we've all had that experience where, you know, either on LinkedIn itself or, you know, potentially via email, um, you know, several times a day, I'll get people that want to sell me leads. And I thought, well, come on, if, if, I'm, if I'm getting this many people trying to sell me leads, how hard can it be, right? So I have to imagine most of you have had the, the experience of having somebody pitch you leads. And, and by the way, most, you know, the best practices in this space is to not buy a list. Um, those lists, you know, are notoriously um, bad. They sometimes have uh, tar pits in them. They sometimes have, you know, addresses that will help flag, you know, if you are a spammer. And so I don't recommend buying lists at all. So, you know, really doing something more organic is much is a much better approach to, to lead generation. So. I just decided to look up, you know, just going to the Google and said, you know, LinkedIn lead generation. And at the top of the list was duck soup. And I clicked on it and I've just never regretted clicking on it since then. And I'll tell you a little bit more about uh, about the journey here. So, you know, at, at the highest level, you know, it really is about marketing uh, and marketing, you know, even in our in our world where you know people want to raise money. You know, all fundraising is the slow conversion of social capital into financial capital. 
Uh, and it's critical to have social capital. People you know, only do business with people they know, like, and trust. Um, people don't want to be sold, right? You know, in fact, we actually invented a new job title for one of our salespeople here. We, you know, instead of calling them a salesperson, we call them a capital consultant, uh, which is, you know, it's a lot softer in its approach. But the key takeaway here, you know, basic marketing 101 is that it takes five impressions, plus or minus two, before people will even have recall. Like they, they won't even remember your name or that you exist or what you do until you have five impressions. In fact, I just saw a statistic uh, yesterday that was a was a, a a closing statistic and it takes typically they were saying you know four you know plus or minus three you know you know um connection attempts before someone would even get a would even accept your phone call uh and that most sales people kind of give up after like the second or third third attempt and it really you get your breakthrough right around right around five times in so um so this is a this is a key component of kind of our you know our crowd builder approach in that it's critical to plan on, you know, you're not going to have a one and done experience here. You're going to have to plan on making several attempts to to reach out to people. Oops, I'm just trying. Okay. So I like to use the analogy of, you know, trying to get somebody's attention at a, like a networking event, um, or you know, if dating also it could be a, it could be a speed dating event. But let's talk about it as a networking event, and that's really what LinkedIn, you know, represents. It represents essentially a business networking event that just happens to be going, you know, 24/7. So I like to say, if you want to get somebody's attention, you first have to make eye contact, right? Then you wave, and then if they you know, if they're responsive, then you get together and you say hello and you have a conversation over by the punch bowl. And so on LinkedIn. You know, the way that you do this with duck soup is that you make eye contact by visiting people's profiles. And that's important because LinkedIn is going to let them know that you looked at their profile, you know, or in this case, duck soup did, you know, on your behalf. And so that's what I call making eye contact. Right? And then what you do is, you know, you wave, right? You wave by either, you know, sending a connection request or sending an email invite, which we'll talk about here shortly. You know, basically saying, you know, we've got some mutuality, and I'll talk a little bit more about that strategy of going only after secondary connections. Uh, and then if they're responsive, uh, you know, then you get, then you get to say hello uh, and start the conversation. So the real the real key strategy here is to be low, slow, and respectful. And part of this comes to having, you know, really an honest reflection, if you will, on, you know, what is your average sales cycle? So in my case, my average sales cycle, believe it or not, is like 18 months. Um, and, that's, and that's essentially from first engagement. So I have to be very, very patient, if you will, just knowing that, you know, if I want to help somebody raise money, it might take them 18 months on average to come around to deciding that, yes, they actually want to do it and they want to work with me to do that. So for me, top of funnel is absolutely critical because, again, people are going to be at different stages. Also, keep in mind, you don't really know what's going on in somebody's life at any given time. Like, you know, someone might, you know, have, you know, they might be sick or they might have a family emergency or they might be on vacation. And so, you know, a low, slow and respectful approach is critical to growing social capital. So let's talk about the crowd builder formula to get 20 leads per day. And by the way, this number is actually, you know, what we're getting on average, you know, depending on what day it is, uh, you know, we can get, you know, as few as five and sometimes as many as 40 leads per day. And so, and again, not every lead is qualified, but at least they're knocking on the door and saying, let's talk. So this is the magic, the secret formula, the secret sauce, if you will, of how CrowdBuilder operates. This is how we encourage, in fact, if you work with us and use our you know, done for you solution, you know, we're gonna basically manage this for you, but the goal is to scan about 2,500 secondary connections, you know, at least once a week, right? So what this will do is this will, this will pre-prime the, the pump, if you will, and basically get things warmed up so that you can then have up to 500 visits per day. Uh, and so I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop out real quick here to my browser and just kind of show you a little bit about how I do it when I use uh, LinkedIn Sales Navigator. So let me see if I can figure out how to change my window. Um, Joe, I might need a, a, a hint here. What's the best way to update the screen? Um. Show me Okay, so now we can see it. So that's gone into full screen mode again with your formula slide. Right. How do I switch over to um, a different window? Um, I'm Stop not... sharing screen. Stop sharing that one and maybe go onto your browser. Uh, change. The thing to do is to just drop out of full screen presentation mode and then that'll drop you back into the browser. Okay. Uh, and then in the... Um, 
there's play show so sorry about this uh yeah i, I mean you are i'm not showing anything at the moment no we just no you're not at the moment oh, here, I, here, okay i see i see i see i see i see a show yes google chrome okay there we go, there we go. better yes <laughs> okay great awesome okay very good so this is this is essentially what i do and how i use the system so having using sales navigator with saved searches i let i let linkedin do a lot of the heavy lifting for me automatically so on a daily basis it'll come out and it will tell me if it has new results uh for me to you know for me to activate and scan on um and so i have several you know profiles that i tend to look for uh, but one of the real magic pieces of this is to you know, ask uh, Duck or uh, sorry, ask LinkedIn. And I'm sorry, I'm just losing, I lost my mouse here. Um, I literally cannot see my mouse. I have no idea what I'm clicking on. It's one. Okay, there it is. It's back. It's back. Choose your own. All right, so let's go. Let's go take a look at uh, you know the results I have here for some something meaty here. There we go. 350 new results. So what I do is I have LinkedIn do all the heavy lifting for me. Uh, and the goal here is to try and make sure that the total results are under 2,500. This is because LinkedIn uh, limits you to 100 pages of results. Uh, and in Sales Navigator, you get 25 uh, results per page. So the things that I look for, I look for secondary connections only. I look by geography. I look for companies that are smaller, uh, that are privately held partnerships, I'm looking specifically for people that are founders. Uh, and then what the real magic is, I want, you know, I want LinkedIn to find me people who have posted on LinkedIn in the last 30 days. And this is an absolutely critical component to growing your social capital. These are people that are the influencers. These are the people that are posting on LinkedIn. And so absolutely, this is the first list you want to scan and connect with. These are people that are posting on LinkedIn and they're the ones that are going to notice that you looked at their profile page. Now, LinkedIn will sometimes send out an email reminder to people that haven't engaged uh, on LinkedIn and say, hey, you're getting a lot of views and they come back and look at that. But honestly, your best strategy is to always start with, right, the people that have posted on LinkedIn in the last 30 days. These are the people you want to engage with because here is the magic of the formula. When you engage with a second degree connection and they become a first degree connection, that mathematically blows up your visibility into your secondary connection. So the goal here is really quite simple. The goal is to simply scan your target list, identify people you want to connect with, whether they connect with you or you connect with them, and then get that connection. Uh, and that's what really is what, you know, that's what really drives, you know, the the magic of uh, of, of, of growing your social capital. So we always recommend at least once a week, scan at least 2,500 new profiles. That will then basically build things up so that Monday through Friday, the system can go out and look at up to 500 profiles per day. And I'll take a pause here. I did this for a full year, doing nothing other than just scanning and visiting profiles, not sending connection requests, not sending in-mails, not sending emails. And I grew my connections on LinkedIn from 4,000 first degree connections to over 10,000 first degree connections doing nothing other just than just scanning and visiting up to 500 profiles per day. That's pretty powerful. In my second year, I added on an email piece of this. I started getting some duck soup points. I started getting the email addresses and then I started sending out uh, what I call bump emails. So let's talk a little bit about sending out, you know, what's essentially a cold email, but it's, it's I like to call it kind of a lukewarm email. Um, so just pin David, yeah. sorry. Can you just go back to full screen please? Cause we can still see your, we can see the next slide and the slide you're on at the moment. Oh, I'm sorry. Is it, it's not on the uh, full screen mode here? Yeah, if you go back to oh. slide. Perfect. There Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Yep, got it. Uh, better. Okay. So, um, thanks. So, yeah. So, the goal here is, you know, you basically scan up to 2,500 connections per week to basically get the system ready to go visit up to 500 profiles per day. Uh, and like I said, doing this and doing nothing else is going to grow your social capital because you're going after people that use linkedin they post on linkedin they care about their own social capital uh, and so you can use this to just grow your own network which is you know which is pretty powerful but then really the magic comes in when you start doing some soft email outreach so 
Using uh, something like an email warm-up service, this is good because this will help your placement. Uh, it can also fix reputation problems, and there's lots of those services out there. You can just Google, you know, warm-up service. Uh, I've got, you know, ones that I, you know, I, I enjoy using. Um, but then the real goal here is to, is to do the what we call the bump before the bite, and this has a two-fold piece of it. One, it verifies that the email address is in fact good. Um, because not every email address is, you know, is still valid. In fact, you know, on average, I'd say probably your population's email addresses are changing. At least 10% of your population are changing and become no longer valid. Uh, so the one is you want to make sure that the email address is valid. Uh, and then two, you know, the simple call to action here is just to connect. So by scanning second degree connections, visiting second degree connections, you now have something honest that you can say. You can say, look, hey, Giles, um, you know, we've got some, we've got some connections in common. I uh, was wondering if you would be interested in connecting directly. A little bit about me, I do the following things. Um, and then, then the third call to action, hey, if you're thinking about raising money, hit me up here, otherwise I'll see you on LinkedIn. So it's literally not really primarily hitting anybody about my services. It's primarily has the goal of just simply connecting. And that's powerful because here's the deal, even if someone is offended by your email, you've really just said, look, I just wanna connect on LinkedIn. Um, it's not that I'm trying to sell you any services. Uh, we obviously have some connections in common. Uh, I was just thinking that maybe we could get connected directly. Um, and, and that's literally just the magic you know, of, of, of doing this in this low, slow, and respectful uh, approach. So don't send a wall of text. This is what I call the no scroll rule, right? So, uh, and I'm sure we all have this experience and some of us might be guilty of it. You get a new connection and you immediately cut, copy, paste in some massive list of things about yourself and all the services you provide. And then it's followed up by a calendar link at the bottom. And that causes somebody to open up that message and you're asking them to scroll. Um, and so what I've learned in my 55 years on the planet is that most people do not enjoy unpleasant surprises or unplanned errands. So don't, you know, don't, don't make people scroll and don't, you know, don't throw a calendar link, you know, in there as well. And I'll, I'll kind of explain why. So, Imagine that you are at a, a networking mixer, right? Again, LinkedIn is essentially a business, you know, networking event, really, 24-7. You know, would you run up to somebody, right? Just jump in their face, start talking at them, and then immediately, you know, thrust your calendar in their face, right? It just doesn't hold up. And so the same sort of, you know, interaction that we have with other humans, you know, absolutely matters and can still, you know, make a difference on, you know, social networks. And so... I don't enjoy getting, in fact, if I get what I call the wall of text, I immediately just delete the conversation. I don't even bother reading it. Uh, and this is also sort of important too for your email strategy. Keep your email tight so that it fits on one screen. Again, the goal here is to simply say, let's get connected. Um, then, you know, we can introduce who you are just as a reminder, this is what I do. You probably see me on LinkedIn, you know, and then if you want to connect, here's a link, you know, to, to, to connect with me through a contact form. Um, so this is this is super this is super important. You don't because I'm sure we've also all had the experience of getting a really long email. Um, you look at the watch and think, oh, well, I'll come back and read that later, and then you forget about it because it gets buried in your inbox. So again, you want to keep your emails very very tight, simple single sentences, uh, and then and that's going to at least improve readability. So some words of advice: do not run at max speed. Uh, this cannot be you know, overstated enough. Duck soup. Uh, uh, especially turbo they are in, it's an incredibly powerful system um uh and it's it's the sort of thing that will get you noticed by linkedin uh, and not in a good way um and so the goal here is to remember you're not going to have a one and done approach this is going to take five plus or minus two impressions and those impressions can come from right clicking follow on that profile uh, liking their content posting content that's relevant uh, to their interests uh, but again, do not run at max speed. Uh, I, I don't recommend it. Now, the good news is, you know, I've been using Duck Soup Turbo for over two years. I have never, ever once been uh, locked out of LinkedIn. I've never had them say, you know, we think you're using automation uh, because, again, the low, slow, and respectful approach uh, is the way to do this. Because, again, I'm, this is a long, a long, this is a marathon, not a sprint. So some last other pieces, make it personal, right? Let them look at your profile. Like when I, you know, when I run, you know, CrowdBuilder and someone connects to me, I don't immediately jump in there and, and try to, you know, sell them my services. I thank them for connecting me. So if they, if they extend the, the outreach to me, I thank them. I say, thank you for, you know, thank you for connecting. Uh, and then I always, you know, depending on, you know, I'll look at their profile again, because again, the, you know, the duck soup had looked at the profile. I'll go look at the profile again. 
And then I almost always ask for a book recommendation. Uh, and this is this is not anything I invented. This is a uh, a story that goes back. That's accredited to many people. I think I first heard about it from Benjamin Franklin, who said he would use this as a technique to disarm his opponents uh, in the Congress. So he'd go to his opponent, he would you know introduce himself, he would look at their bookshelf and ask to borrow a book. And it has an interesting social psychology effect to it. Um, so I always say you know make me smarter. What's you know the last book you read? or recommend, uh, and you know, if they, if they haven't read a book, I'll ask for a podcast or, you know, and then immediately after that, when they tell me one or two choices, again, without even getting too far into it, I'll just simply ask them, you know, what's one thing you keep thinking about from that book? And so I've been just engaged in a dialogue. I basically, you know, I made eye contact, I waved, we're starting to talk. I haven't said anything about my business. I haven't even asked them about their business. I'm asking them about them. Uh, and that is incredibly disarming. And you know, this is where fully half of our sales leads come from. So people will, you know, they'll be engaged, they'll be curious, they'll look at my profile, they see, they'll see that I help, you know, with you know raising capital. And fully half of my, you know, my qualified leads on a daily basis come from those conversations that simply started out with being grateful, uh, asking them for a book recommendation, sorry, uh, and then you know, and just letting them, you know, essentially approach you. Uh, and so half of them, half of them come from conversations on LinkedIn, and the other half come from uh, the email outreach. Right. So be curious, get to know their interests. So really, in summary, the 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 powerful, you know, the the the, the winning strategy is, you know, Duck Soup Turbo uh, is a critical component uh, to the crowd builder model uh, using scan mode. Uh, it's critical to, you know, basically build up a pipeline, the top of the pipeline, to then plan on going back and visiting up to 500 profiles per day, nice and slow. Uh, and then once you've got, you know, through either DuckSoup points or, you know, some other API automation, once you've got some good email addresses, start sending out email bumps. And so again, the goal here is to, you know, one, determine if you have a good email address. Uh, two, uh, you know, you can use all sorts of, you know, tracking to see if they've opened the email and how often, and then, you know, you know, you know, following, you know, the rules of your country, like in the US, we have the CAN Spam Act. So we have to have, you know, our name and our address and an opt out link uh, in there and, you know, and respecting the opt out requests. Um, but fully half of our leads come in from people responding uh, to emails. Uh, and so, right, accept the connection, make the connection. And of course, just always be grateful. With that, uh, let's open up for questions. Hi, here I am. Sorry, I'm I was trying it. to find my window then. What, I, I love the fact that you're talking about, A, that it's a, a the, the slow process. I think that's really, um, I think people forget that a lot of the time. We've talked about it in a few webinars recently about the fact that, you know, nurture, um, take it steady, take it slow. Some people's sales cycles are, are long. Um, but I think there's still this kind of desire to see quick wins. Um, and I think it's it's really poignant. And I also really like the way that you're talking about, you know, just um, finding a little bit of an interest, ask them that query about the, the books, you know, which tell me something, make me smarter. I love that. And I also think that your point about um, offending or not offending people that actually you're just asking to connect you're not trying to sell anything you're not pushing anything onto them um so if they're not in that that space and they you know you told me a few stories where people have just said oh i think you're not saying the right things here and i don't want to connect with you and your point there is that well i'm only asking because we have connections in common so but that's fine if you don't want to connect with me no problem um and I think that's really good. But my favorite takeaway from all of this, David, um, it sounds really silly, but it's really simple. It's thanking people for connecting. Um, I think it's really easy to just keep connecting and you think, great, I've got another one. I've got another one. That's someone else that I can kind of sell to. Um, so just to go back and continue that nurturing and building that relationship by saying, oh, thank you. you know. It, it's the opener, isn't it, for more conversations? I think that's brilliant. Um, so thank you. Enough from me. Let's get to people's questions. Um, I can see that Giles has been doing a great job of answering so many of them already. Um, so Will has asked, 
would you provide calendar links in your cold email sequences? So you've said that don't bombard people by going, hi, here's my calendar. Um, however, at what point would you consider doing that in your sequences, David? Oh, for sure. That's that's a that's a really great question. So um <laughs> Because again, if you if you give your calendar link, you're going to blow up your calendar, and you may not have time to do really the business that you do on a daily basis. And so, what we've done is, we you know part of our part of our email sequencing is again to be grateful, uh, and then to invite them to look at some video content. So again, so we're not doing or we're not doing the 101 show ourselves, and so we have a, a little 10 minute video that's part of the the first or second email sequence is to get them, and the goal is to get them to, is to really to get them to opt out faster, right? Again. Uh, as a you know, as a small business owner, there are four things that we have to protect vigorously: our time, our money, our morale, and our focus. Uh, and you know, people tend to forget about focus. And you know, if people keep stealing your focus, you know, that's going to eat up a bunch of your time, which is going to then impact potentially, you know, your you know your 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 you know opportunity uh, to generate you know money, right? Time, money, morale, and focus. So I would say, you know, it's it, I would put the calendar link, you know, not necessarily as far out in the drip stream, but you want to say you want to make sure that a they are you know they haven't unsubscribed uh, that they are in fact you know uh, a target client for you and really the goal is to get them to opt out you know faster uh, than instead of having to you know spend a bunch of time on the phone doing the 101 show when a pre-recorded little video even a three-minute video might help to you know determine whether or not you know it's a good fit for them. And what would you put in that video? What's what's the sort of thing that you'd be looking for in terms of content for them? Yeah, so there's a there's a formula that we have at Silicon Prairie. We call it our high five and thumbs up. And so the high five is, you know, what problem are you solving? Who are you solving it for? What unfair competitive advantage do you have or unmet need have you discovered? Um, and then on the business side, this is more for you know for for trying to raise capital. You know, when do you break even doing it? And then really the credibility piece. You know, you know, are you the right person to to do it? And so again, going back to you know, people will do business with people they know, like, and trust. You know, you want to, and again, people have the the attention span of a gnat, um, and so you want you want to make sure that within the first 30 seconds, they know at a high level what problem you solve, uh, and if that's a problem they have, they'll keep watching. Okay. Um, here is a question from Delphine, who said, "What is an email bump?" An email bump is basically uh, it's a tiny little email that you send out. To determine is the email address valid, uh, and you know, and, and making making sure if it's not valid, you can then pull it out of your list, and then you know, it's part of you know checking for you know visibility. Uh, to and sometimes this stuff will go into spam, but really a bump is is uh, I use the analogy of um, you know the bump before the bite. So uh, I'm a scuba diver, and so I know a lot about sharks, and sharks will bump things to figure out if they're food or logs. <laughs> And so we came up with the bump before the bite concept uh, in email marketing. And so the bump email is just that tiny little, you know, hello email that doesn't have a lot of stuff in there. It doesn't have a lot of links. The primary goal is to make sure that, you know, the email address is good to also, you know, determine, you know, if they, if they get it and they opt out, right, the story's over. But in theory, if they don't opt out, uh, at that point, you could, you know, potentially, you know, lawfully take that email address and put it into a drip campaign. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that one. So Jacob has asked, how do you stay up, scale up a new account? Yeah, it's so it's you, you got to start slow, right? So again, and LinkedIn, and we've been we've been watching this even with some of our own team members. And so you know you don't immediately jump to you know visiting 500 profiles. Uh, you know you've got to start slow. Start with you know uh, 50, then add on you know another 25 a day. And so you know the crowd builder system that we built does that automatically. It, it auto scales. Uh, up and so again, the goal here is to. We, in fact, we always recommend when you start using our system, you should obviously scan and visit all of your first degree connections first, um, because these people will again, you know, a, you're going to get the data, and b, you know, they're going to be reminded that you exist, right? And so we've even just with our own team members, we start with our first degree connections, and people have reached back out. You know, some relationships go back 20 years, and like, oh, hey, I saw that you just got a new job. You know, let's get together and have coffee and talk about it. So I'd say. Again, the goal here is is to blow up your first degree connections, but you want to have a you know it's not just a pure numbers game. You want to make sure it's quality first degree connections, uh, and the best you know the best strategy is to have them ask you to connect, right? So you know LinkedIn put in some limits. Um, I'm probably you know part of probably to blame for that. You know a couple of years ago, um, and so you can only you can only add you know I, I literally at one point I think I looked at my queue. I had like a thousand invites out at one point. Um, so sorry. 
but yeah, so LinkedIn has like a limit of about 100 connection requests you can put out, you know, plus or minus depending on the size of your network. But you can take unlimited requests inbound. And so that's really the goal and the magic of sending out the bump email to the secondary connection. Hey, we've got some connections in common. Let's get connected directly. You're having them make the ask of you. So then you can save your, you know, your, your connection requests really for the high value targets. Good stuff. I like this. Um, uh, question from Tim. Uh, he said, this sounds crazy simple. Do you use any automated messaging or larger outreach to current connections once they've connected? That's a great question. The short answer is no, I, I, I don't. I don't I don't send out, I don't use any LinkedIn messaging. Actually, I find the LinkedIn messaging system to be uh, challenging and problematic. Um, I don't understand why Microsoft, who built Hotmail, doesn't make a better internal email sort of system for the thing. Um, but yeah, it's crazy simple. And and the reality here is that, um, you know, and I think I've learned this from other Duck Soup we, um, seminars, webinars, is that, you know, the people that you engage with on LinkedIn are probably not going to be your clients, but they're going to be the boosters. It's going to be the silent majority. Uh, so that's why I suggest, you know, you know, really focusing your efforts on the people that are posting on LinkedIn uh, and then, you know, starting to engage with their content and it'll be their crowd that shows up you know, and reaches out uh, to expand the network uh, and, and, and do it. So, I mean, we've looked at things like, you know, like the bump email is fixed. It's the same email I send out with, you know, variability with the name uh, in there. And we've looked at, you know, some other services around, you know, using AI to generate content. Honestly, the, the, the warm-up service I use, um, you know, will, you know, do AI generated content to basically improve deliverability. Um, but yeah, we haven't really looked at, you know, Really, I mean, on the automation side, like a crowd builder can automatically go out and follow somebody if they open the email. Uh, again, this is using DuckSoup Turbo, uh, which is amazing. And so we do have some stuff that, you know, based on some triggers uh, like that. But yeah, real, realistically, you know, nobody really, you know, likes, I, I don't, you know, I, I kind of cringe when I see that I've got a bunch of messages on LinkedIn because I know that, you know, fully half of them are going to be, you know, fake accounts trying to get connected or people, you know, sending me walls of text with calendar links. So one of the questions on here has come from Stuart and he has said, do you do all of your connecting manually? So I think we kind of just answered that one with your hint there about Duxoop Turbo, <laughs> but I'll still let you answer it anyway. <laughs> yeah, sure. So I, I mean, so automatically, mean, obviously when people ask you to connect, right, they're doing the work and that's really the bulk of what I do. I just let people, you know, naturally connect to me. Um, but then what I will do is I will look inside of, um, inside of CrowdBuilder in our dashboard and I'll say, well, this person, you know, has looked at my email, you know, 12 times today, or maybe they've, you know, because I've sent them an email before, I can see that they've opened my emails now a total of, you know, 50 times. I'll mm -hmm. click on, I'll click on the URL, go to their page and then send the invite individually. But I, I'm doing it based on, you know, sort of a, a triage approach, right? So I want to do this based on people who are engaging and they, and they, may, they might just be shy. Like I'll, I'll get to their page and I'll see that they, they're following me, but they didn't send the connection request. Um, and, and, you know, and even to that point, I'll, you know, this will be maybe somewhat surprising is that even people who opt out of my bump emails, I will still go out and look at their profiles and then sometimes I'll send a connect request and guess what? 90% of them will accept my connect request because they'll come and see that I'm a real person. I have a large network. Um, and so, and again, so it's still a win. Like I still, cause again, my call to action was let, let's get connected. Um, so even if the email bounces, I still know who that person is on LinkedIn. I can go look at my bounced emails, uh, go click on the URL, and Duck Soup might, you know, pick up a new email address. So then it will just flow back into the system to to get bumped at a future date. So another kind of follow up then here. So um, this is from Rob. He said, if I understand correctly, you visit their profile on LinkedIn, and then find their email address, and then you email them. Do people ask how you got their email address when you email them? Um, so the short answer is it, they will sometimes ask if it's a really, really old email address. So sometimes, you know, depending on the service provider, you know, it might've scraped that email address off of an old website. So it might be an AOL address, quite honestly, or a Yahoo address. Um, and so sometimes people will ask, but again, because my, my, my go to, my go to, uh, my go to question, right. The call, to, the call to action here is in the subject line. You know, I use a little hand waving emoji, which increases open rates. I say, hey, you know, Giles, we have, you know, some connections in common. Should we get connected directly? And so most people don't really seem surprised by how I got a hold of their email. Okay. 
So it's not a question that you get asked very often then. No, I mean, I, I've, I've, I've had one person really be surprised. Like, I'm, he's like, how did you find this email address? Um, it's like, I didn't want to say, well, thanks, Duck Soup. Um, <laughs> Duck, Duck's Points found it. <laughs> so here's a couple of questions then around scanning and visiting. Um, one's from Kevin, another from Charles. Um, what's the advantage of scanning before visiting? And then also, um, could you explain more about why you scan and then visit in this process? Yeah, it's all, it all comes down to automation. So by scanning, I preload our database with revisits. And so by scanning, I'm basically getting enough of the records to get like their name, uh, their first name, last name, their title, uh, location, I think comes in there, uh, and then the URL to go back and revisit them. And so I basically, by scanning, I'm, I'm basically loading my database up with uh, with work. So you don't want the robot to go hungry, right? You got to feed your robot. And so by scanning, I usually scan on the weekends. And, and the nice thing about scanning is that you can literally scan thousands, like tens of thousands of records, uh, as long as you do it slowly, uh, without ever triggering any kind of reaction from, uh, from LinkedIn. And again, as long as you do it in the slowest mode possible, you know, it might come back and say you're making too many requests. Uh, but in scan mode, you literally can scan, you know, thousands thousands of, of of records and then you've got something for the robot to work on every day and so you don't want to have that queue go empty so you know visiting 500 profiles a day you know you know it, take, it takes a lot of you know back-end sort of data to prep to keep that thing busy okay so there's lots of questions about where you're getting the email addresses from yep yeah, so emails are they come from uh, linkedin itself so sometimes people will voluntarily put their email addresses in there uh, there is the the duck soup points, uh, which is awesome. So duck soup has uh, got an email database uh, that it's built up over the years. Uh, and then we also have um, some APIs built into CrowdBuilder that can go find you know a valid email address based on first name, last name, and and company company URL. It's a very common tactic to do that, and you can you can do that you know pretty easily. In fact, a lot of these these services will allow you to bulk upload first name, last name, company URL. Uh, and then you can upload the spreadsheet and it'll come back and give you, you know, a score that says this is a verified address or this address has uh, is verified to opt out. Um, and so there's lots of ways to, to acquire the email addresses. Okay. Um, let's have another look at one. What do you do to your LinkedIn account itself to spark people's interest once you have visited their page? Um, so again, by asking if we're engaged on the messenger, you know, asking them about, you know, themselves, but by and large, I have a, you know, a content publishing strategy where I nourish my audience, you know, throughout the week. And so Mondays, you know, it's light, it's informative. Fridays is sometimes humorous. Um, and then depending on, you know, which school of thought, you know, you make your big ask on a Wednesday or a Thursday. Um, and so for me, it, it's it's about constantly going out and, and doing some mini publishing. And so it's super easy to find stuff that you care about uh, and post it and then start getting engagements. Uh, and then after that, you know, once you've, you know, you've let the robot do its work, you know, Duck Soup will activate and you can go visit the people that liked your post. Wonderful. Thank you. I, I like that about the, the kind of the three times a week thing. I know quite a lot of businesses will post kind of the same time every week but i think it's it's quite nice when you're you're giving different content and different information out there um let's have a look i was gonna say one other, one other point it's super easy to just take a post that resonates with you and repost it with comments so and that's a critical thing that again i learned from another duck seminar is that in order to get those engagements just don't say repost blindly like post with comments and so everything if you follow me on linkedin everything i have always has a byline at the top and it's usually meant to be something humorous or eye-catching um, but I will, you know, if I'm if I'm pressed for finding something to post, um, I'll just scan through my feed. And if I find something that, you know, is engaging, is driving a lot of engagements, you know, is, is a first reconnection that, you know, usually puts high, high, high quality content, I'll repost their content to my network, you know, and always, you know, being grateful, you know, using the at sign to tag them in. Uh, and then that will help boost, you know, boost, uh, boost the uh, the signal. So we're also we're getting quite a few of the same kind of questions actually. So this is another one about um, sending that calendar link. So this is from uh, Yaroon. What's the best timing and best approach to convert the email LinkedIn conversation to a call or meeting? 
and what should be the topic of that call or meeting? I mean, obviously it's going to be different depending on what your kind of business is, but um, should it be focused on sales or should it be some alternative subject in order to get that kind of buy-in for that, that meeting? What? Yeah, so that's that, that's great. Um, you know, so the short answer is, you know, you get consent. Right? So when somebody asks you for it, um, and, and again, depending on how much free time you have, uh, you know, I worked in, you know, in corporate America when you were, in, you know, a new employee, uh, they would do what's called get to know you, GTKYs. Uh, so get to know you. And so what you do is you would ask for a calendar, a meeting with somebody uh, in the company to spend just 15 minutes. And it was purely just a get to know you uh, kind of a call. Um, and so uh, again, if I find somebody you know has got an interesting book recommend, or I recommend something to them, and, I'm, and if my calendar is fairly light, uh, and I think that there might be a good chance for a conversion, again, realize that a lot of the times the people that you connect with will never buy from you, right? But it's their secondary connections, and that's really that's really I think the power of just you know keeping it personal, like making sure that you know you're you're authentic, you're organic about it, you're curious, be intellectually curious, is that the person that you're talking to may never buy from you, but they're gonna know who you are and they're like, oh, well, and you can even just ask them, it's like, well, okay, like, you know, I understand you're not raising money at this time, but do you know somebody who is? And so I get, you know, again, I'd say another, you know, quarter of my leads just simply come from asking my connections for referrals. Okay. Um, let's just go through another few. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, I had one then. Where's it gone? Where's it gone? Oh, how do you connect the profiles that didn't connect to your email bump? Um, so the challenge there is that not everybody looks at images in their email. So this is the sort of the dirty secret of, of email marketing <laughs> is that, you know, in order to verify if somebody opened your email, they've got to pull some content from your email. And that's typically a tracking pixel um, or you're know, pulling down some, some images. But you know, it's really from a from an, um, uh, an information security standpoint, it's actually safer to turn off load remote content in your email. I'm actually surprised about how many people like I see literally how many times people open my emails because they have images turned on. Um, but I have to assume that even if someone if I don't see that someone opened my email or didn't respond to it, they just go back in the queue for a bump in, you know, in the next cycle. And so I have a cadence where I will rebump people up to five or six times. Uh, over the course of months, uh, I will send out, they, they become eligible for a rebump after 32 days. So the 32 day number means that they're not going to see an email from me twice in the same month. And so if I don't, if they don't engage, and if I don't see any response, I just simply will send another bump email because I have to assume that, you know, a, pr a certain percentage go to spam, uh, a certain percentage of people, you know, might have, you know, gone and followed me, but didn't actually hit respond. And that's actually very common. Like I'll go look at who followed me and it's a high percentage of people that got the email maybe i can tell they opened it but now they're following me uh and as we know from you know again other great content from duck soup is that followers are just as good as first three connections um that you know that realistically when you post content the the linkedin algorithm will select a, a good chunk of your followers to to post the content out to and so you know realistically even if you don't get that first three connection getting a follower is just as valuable at least as, as i understand it today to the linkedin the linkedin algorithm and so you know, I'd say being, you know, intentional about, because it's a process, right? It's scanning, it's visiting, it's email bumping, it's, you know, potentially going out and sending connect requests to the high value targets. Uh, and then just, you know, using the tools, like, let's go see who's following me. And again, you know, I, you know, you know LinkedIn, I said Duck Soup will activate on that page and say, okay, let's go visit those, those people, right? Or just kind of scan the thing once a day and, you know, follow somebody back um, or make the connect request. Thank you very much. So we have another one here from uh, Juan, I think is the name, saying, this is all really interesting. I'm in Spain and our volumes are much lower, about one eighth of the volumes in the US. Should I adjust the figures that you supplied accordingly? And have you experienced or references from other countries? So, uh, you know, when you say like it one, when we say one eighth is just based on the, the population size of the country. I mean, I guess yeah. it might be, yeah, because I can't imagine LinkedIn has different criteria in, in different countries. Yeah, I, would, 
Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily think so. It really depends on your product or service. And if you know, if you're geocentric, I mean, obviously there's a large, you know, population outside of, you know, the geographical boundaries. But if you have a business that let's say, you know, it's a physical brick and mortar and you want to drive traffic, then yeah, sure. Your area of effect is, is sort of lower, but uh, you know, it's been my experience that, you know, warming up, you know, the LinkedIn account, you know, getting up to 500 profile visits per day, um, you know, I don't think it has anything to really do with, you know, kind of where you are. Um, I, I certainly have any experience. I mean, you guys would know, Joe and, and Giles, if there's anything, you know, with, with, with regards to how LinkedIn treats geographies, but I, I haven't seen it. I'm, I'm not aware of it. Uh, no, I'm not either. No. I was say if he stays silent, then that's also a no. <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Jacob has asked, could you remind us what your search criteria is to find leads? Yeah, for sure, absolutely. So in, in my case, so I, you know, I help people raise money. So I found over time that the kind of people I'm looking for are people who take credit for the name founder in their title. I find that, that people that use the word founder are the ones that are actually doing the real work in the business. See, I don't wanna say CEO is a throwaway title, but I find that people use words founder and especially co-founder for me is really super interesting because anybody who is a co-founder, that means at least there's one other person that's willing to work with them, right? So I look for founders, co-founders, CEOs, presidents, uh, partners, of small firms in the US uh, that have been, you know, operating for less than six years. Uh, and I, my first go-to is, you know, has, has this person posted on LinkedIn in the last 30 days? Uh, that's my, my first target. And then after that, I then begin, you know, once I've exhausted that list, I'll then open it up to, you know, everyone uh, in that. But again, the goal here is to, is to fill that queue. I wanna see, you know, 2,500, you know, plus respond, results in order to scan um, because that just, you know, that just means that, you know, I now have, you know, a richer, a richer sort of pool to, to pull from. So, but that's just, that's just, that's just my criteria. I mean, ultimately, you know, they like when I have clients, I have people that are, you know, are dentists that have some sort of invention, you know, we're going to go look for, you know, for orthodontists, you know, by geography. Um, we're going to look for, you know, people that are, you know, you know, practice size, you know, number of years of experience. Um, that, that kind of stuff. I find that, you know, with my, you know, with at least my business, you know, people that have been running a business for more than 10 years, you know, probably don't need to raise money or they, they don't seem to be as responsive. In fact, the funny thing uh, about the founder uh, title is that sometimes, you know, when I've had people that have, you know, I'd say, you know, be snippy about the email invite, they've only recently added the word founder onto their LinkedIn profile. And they're, they're basically like a solo, you know, consultant that have been doing it for 30 years. Uh, clearly not my target audience. Okay. Um, let's have a look. I think I think we're nearing the end. There's quite a few questions in here that are the same. So there are things about email bumps, which we've already covered, um, scanning and visiting, which we've already covered. Um, feel free to shout up, Giles, if I've missed anything. I'm just just bear with me, guys. I'm just going back through all the questions that we've had. Yeah, there's, there's, it just just says a lot of people who've asked the question about what is meant by scanning. So um, I'm actually going to put in the chat box uh, the link as to what we mean by scanning. Um, let me stick that in the chat box. So everyone's got that. There we go. Just explains what the scan button does. Duck Soup can you, you can get Duck Soup to scan a, a list of uh, prospects. Um, oh, everyone's got their camera on now. Let's put my camera. There we go. Um, you can you can get DuckSoup to scan a list very quickly um, by using the scan button. I've just put the link into the uh, into the chat box there, and it's a way of very of gathering high level data very very quickly, which Dave has built into their in, into their solution there to then trigger um, further further um, actions within their uh, their solution. Um, so yeah, the scanning scanning process is, is very straightforward and is relatively quick, um, and just gathers high level data, including the LinkedIn URLs. And then further beyond that, and then that's that's where David's process takes over with with the auto visiting, etc. Thank you. Um, I'm just reading. There's a couple more coming in already. Are there any so limitations? I'm on emails? My, my fancy oh. Here. oh. <laughs> Are there any uh, limitations on the number of emails you can send out in a day? 
Uh, the short answer is no. I mean, you absolutely can send out as many emails. So it, it'll depend on your email service provider. Um, and so, you know, I don't recommend using your own, you know, so Gmail won't let you send out more than 500 emails a day. I don't recommend using your own Gmail account. Um, you know, there's lots of best practices around warming up what's called a lookalike domain. So you don't send an email from your main domain. You send one from a similar looking domain. You warm it up with a warm up service. And then, you know, you use an, uh, a bulk emailing service uh, to, to, to do it. And that's really, at the end of the day, that's really, I can control how busy we are by how many emails. So I, again, I limit it to 500 visits a day. Uh, and I don't recommend, you know, really pushing that because I want to be able to go and look at profiles manually. Uh, but yeah, once you have a database built up, you know, you've been running it for, you know, for several weeks or a month or whatever, um, you know, I routinely send out a couple thousand emails uh, a day uh, just automatically. And again, it's all the same sort of response of, you know, let's get connected on LinkedIn. Um, and so, you know, when, you know, at the, at the peak, when we just, when we did actually push it, we put out about between me and one of my, one of my partners, we put out a total of, I think, close to like 8,000 emails on a single day. And we had 50 inbound leads uh, generated, but then we were basically became overloaded. So let's just dial it back down. So the, the, and you'll see this too, is that, that, you know, really by using the email, you're outside of LinkedIn. And again, the call to action is to get connected. That's what helps you bypass uh, your connection limits per week. Thank you. Um, that I think most of them we've covered now. Let me have a look. Tracy Enos has posted a few. Thanks, Tracy. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> um, I'm passing away with Tracy in the background. Yeah, it's great to, great to see you on, on the call, Tracy. With regards to um, your search criteria, Tracy's also said that she quite likes to use partner and managing partner too. Um, if that's of any use to anybody. Um, that's an article I think you're just putting in there, aren't you? Um, would you use a note, this is from Seb, would you use a note together with a connection request or would you rather send it without a note? So I think. Um, so what I usually do is um, if someone will click on one of the links in my, in my, in my email. So again, my email is, Hey, we've got some connections. Let's get connected directly. A little bit about me. If you're raising money or know someone is real quick, you know, hit me up here, which is then a contact us page uh, on my site. And so when I, and then one of the things we capture, of course, is we capture the source of the lead. We ask them to put their LinkedIn URL in there. And so I will get people that respond to my email. They'll click on the contact. They'll enter my contact form. I immediately go out and visit their page. And then the first thing I do is, as part of my connect request is, I say, you know, thanks for, you know, thanks for connecting with me and my team. We look forward to, you know, learning more about, you know, your, your next level. And so, you know, I will put in content being, again, being grateful for people that have filled out my contact form. But by and large, um, you know, if I, if I find someone who I think, you know, they've seen my email, they know who I am. I'll just blindly hit connect and they'll, you know, they typically 90% of them will just accept it. I think, I think we're about done then. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's pretty much all of the ones. Yeah, there's a couple of ones here who are asking a bit more detail on, on, on things, but um, yeah. Just I think reach out to me on LinkedIn. I mean, just, if you want to read, I mean, I'm findable. I mean, I, I, you know, I grew my social capital with duck soup from 4,000 connections to 10,000 connections in first one year doing nothing other than scanning and visiting 500 profiles per day. And now I've gone from that 10,000 mark to over 23,000 followers using the, the bump, the bump email uh, uh, piece of it. Um, and you know, it's, it's like 22,000, you know, 500, you know, con you know, connection, first degree connections, 23,000 followers. Um, and, you know, again, just it's a matter of just being grateful. Um, uh, and, and, you know, I mean, I, I can be kind of salty on LinkedIn, but that's, you know, I'm warm and cuddly in person. <laughs> I have my dog here to prove it. Um, but, you know, the goal is, is, to, is to create engagement. And so I will absolutely, you know, say things, you know, provocative, still respectful, but provocative or respectfully disagreeing with people on LinkedIn as part of, you know, part of the, the theater of it. Uh, but absolutely, you know, your best, your best business is going to come from those secondary connections. Uh, people who don't know you, but they know someone who does know you. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's the it's well, it's the easy, it's the most obvious route, isn't it, to kind of growing your growing your connection, growing your network, kind of quickly and simply. Um, we talk a lot about making sure that there's something in common and that you've got something to talk about, and that's a really easy one there. Um, yeah. 
so thank you david um i think it's been an absolute pleasure there was one final remark that i had down here who uh let me find him chris lambert um says hey chris. He, he's known you for over 15 years and he's a tremendous problem solver and he loved your presentation so there you go um that's awesome thanks i should uh put my camera back on just to say hi be grateful thanks so much, I chris he's the only one who's enjoyed it so um thank you david there you go. Been that's really love from the silicon prairie <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome all right i'm gonna go off and uh move, move the deck forward here for you thank you so um yeah i mean great session um what a wonderful host uh, loads of good stories i think you know lots of lots of great questions from everybody um obviously you'll all get a copy of the recording later today um it'll be up on the website probably tomorrow um we always generate a blog post as well following these and that's where we'll capture a lot of the questions that were asked um and we kind of point you towards time frames as to when uh, in the video to fast forward you to find the answer to your question so that's also a good one to look out for um so in two weeks time we'll be doing a session on uh managing linkedin campaigns um using the duck stash and um for that one we'll be asking giles wonderful giles to come back to the stage um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be on in two weeks time we'll be talking about some of the changes you've seen on the funnel flow um how you can upload people into a campaign from there now and a few other bits and pieces around that um and also how you can download your data and bits and pieces so yeah uh, that's coming in two weeks time coming in two weeks so it's on the 31st of october um i will also be away so i'll be handing over the gauntlet to beth i'm sure she'll do a much better job than i do um while i'm taking a couple of days off so um all that remains to say is if i just very quickly post this in the chat for anyone who wants to register for that webinar if i can find the chat function here we go if you want to register for that ducks dash webinar I've just this second posted the link into the chat function. Um, so you can go and do it now before we before we disappear. Otherwise, um, you can go onto the website and book it in on there. Um, Giles, as ever, we've got these booster and technical calls. Giles is always on hand. Uh, there's, a, there's a few others that do it as well as Giles, but Giles is always on hand to um, offer advice and guidance. Uh, for anything LinkedIn and DuckSoup related. So um, don't forget, if you go to the services page, um, you'll be able to get hold of him and go, oh my God, I don't know what I'm doing, please help. <laughs> or I've tried this and it's not doing what I want it to do, please help. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's probably it. Uh, shall I stop rambling now, Giles? <laughs> I think maybe we should, uh, yeah, call it a day. <laughs> So thanks to everyone for attending. Thank you, David. Thank you, Giles. And we will see you all again in two weeks' time. Bye.